Thus, in the previous movie, we talked about some seminal experiments that led to our modern concept of the atom. And of particular note, and worth summarizing and expanding on, are the subatomic particles. So we think that an atom is a nucleus, which contains protons and neutrons surrounded by an electron cloud. Protons, neutrons, and electrons for chemists are the three main subatomic particles. We talk about the mass of these particles. Now, all of them have mass, but what we show in here when we say protons have a mass of one, neutrons have a mass of one, and electrons have a mass of zero, is that protons and neutrons have the same mass, and electrons have a negligible mass in comparison relative to that of the protons and the neutrons. On the scale, the mass of an electron is actually 1 over 1760, so we pretty much set 0 compared to the mass of the protons and neutrons. So the mass of the atom is in the nucleus, because the nucleus is where the protons and neutrons are, the things with the mass. The electrons in that electron cloud, negligible mass. Also, things that you absolutely have to know are the charges of these particles. Protons charge of plus one, neutrons neutral, electrons charge of minus one. Again, the one is relative. What we show in there is that protons have the same positive charge as electrons have a negative charge. So in order to balance out a proton, you need one electron. Thus, for a given atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. And we call that the atomic number Z. And that is what defines the atom type. Going all the way back to Dalton, we said all hydrogen atoms are identical. No, as we'll see in a minute, there are different types of hydrogen atoms, but every single one of them has the same atomic number, which in the case of hydrogen is one. Every hydrogen atom has one proton, one electron. If it has more than that, more than that number of protons, it is not hydrogen. The mass of the atom, which we'll often call the mass number, is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, because protons have a mass of one, neutrons have a mass of one. A lot of times we'll give that the symbol A for mass number, Z is the symbol for the atomic number, the number of protons, and big N in this case is equal to the number of neutrons. So I provided you with a little spoiler on that last slide. I said different types of hydrogen atoms, each with the same atomic number, same number of protons. OK, and the number of protons, the atomic number of an atom defines that atom type throughout the entire course where we talk about hydrogen. We're talking about atoms that have one proton in the nucleus. But there are different types of hydrogen atoms. Every type of atom has different types of them. Okay, And a given type of atom defined by atomic number, number of protons and electrons, but different so-called isotopes of that type of atom have different numbers of neutrons. And if they have the same number of protons, different numbers of neutrons, that must mean that they have a different mass. For example, chlorine. You can look at the periodic table and you see that chlorine has an atomic number of 17, which means that there are 17 protons in every single chlorine atom. But there are two stable isotopes of chlorine. One of those has 18 neutrons. One of those has 20 neutrons. Something that confuses students a bit is how can you tell? Well, the answer is you can't look at the periodic table and tell how many isotopes there are of a given type of atom. You certainly can't tell how many different neutrons there are in those different isotopes. From the periodic table, we can get first and foremost the number of protons. Now, as you'll see in a minute, we can get a pseudo indirect bit of information all folding the isotopes in with itself. But the periodic table tells us the number of protons, doesn't tell us the number of each neutrons in a particular isotope. How do we distinguish between those? Well, we use the mass, okay? We said that one of these isotopes has 18 neutrons, so that means it has a mass of 35. So the symbol we use, if we want to talk about this particular isotope, is Cl35, so that's the atomic symbol, then the mass number, or put the mass number in a superscript on the left of the atomic symbol. The other isotope, 20 neutrons, therefore mass of 37. So quickly pause and write out what we've used as the symbols for it. Cl37 or 37 Cl. 
Now, where this is important is in that relative mass. Because if we took a sample of chlorine, both of those isotopes are going to be present. We'd have some of the atoms would have a mass of 35, some of the atoms would have a mass of 37. And so when we look at the relative mass, that's the average mass of all of those atoms that are in there. Now that average is of course the total mass divided by the number of atoms, but it's not a simple average of the isotopes. The average mass of chlorine is not the average of 35 and 37, it's not 36. Because you're going to have different numbers of atoms weigh 35 to those that weigh 37. So we talk about a rated average. Right. A weighted average is this little funny squiggle sign, which just means sum up the mass of an isotope times the fraction of atoms that are that isotope. So for chlorine, I'm going to tell you that three quarters are chlorine 35, which means a quarter of the chlorine 37. So the weighted average or the atomic mass or the relative mass will be 35 times 0.75 plus 37 times 0.25. I'm going back to this, right? This sum sign, this big sigma, tells you you're adding them up. And what are you adding up? The mass of each one, 35 here, 37 here, times the fraction, 0.75 here, 0.25 there. Add that up and the relative mass of chlorine is 35.5. Now we will do some practice of this in class um, if you haven't quite got the full hang of this. As a final deal, all of these things of interest are reported on the periodic table. If we think of chlorine, the box on the periodic table looks like this. You have Cl in the middle, which is the atomic symbol. You have 17 at the top, and in any periodic table box, there's a whole number that is the atomic number, or Z. And then there's always a fractional number that's the atomic mass, or the relative mass, the observed relative mass. All of these things we'll come back to several times as we go through the course. Hopefully you've really got the important bits of what we're talking about here. Atoms, nucleus, positive, all the mass in the nucleus, negative electrons going around that nucleus, floating around outside it in an electron cloud. The periodic table is now arranged in order of atomic number, thanks to Moseley's discoveries. Atomic number of a given element tells you that every single atom of that element has that atomic number, has that number of protons, has that number of electrons. The relative mass, the macroscopic mass that we have to use when we're thinking about an amount of um, a particular element is the weighted average of all of the isotopes. All the atoms have the same atomic number, different isotopes have different numbers of neutrons, the observed relative mass is the weighted average of all of those stable isotopes.